there's one thing wrong with TikTok. Yes, it's the fact that you can't auto scroll on the TikTok app. You have to manually swipe to go from one video to another. And this can be entirely annoying when you're trying to do different tasks and maybe your hands aren't available. And I wanted to implement this feature. First, I thought surely there must be a setting inside of the TikTok app to enable this, but there isn't. Then I did some Googling and found lots of people were looking for this feature as well. So I thought to myself, I'm a developer. I could just create this feature. Originally, I started off simple. I just wanted to jump into the iPhone and see if there was some setting in the operating system that would enable auto scroll. This would make the whole problem go away, but you can't really do that either. So then I started jumping online. And what I did was some research to see exactly what the TikTok algorithm looks like. If I can pull down the APIs, because maybe I could just use the app as it is and create some sort of layer on top, sort of like an iframe where we can have scrolling implemented while pulling in the videos and it could just exist on top. Well, that isn't entirely possible either. A lot of the APIs for TikTok are actually locked down quite heavily. So yes, while you can head to a video and you can grab the embedded code, you can't really do so as easily for grabbing just the video URLs from the API. I couldn't really get access to them in the way that I was thinking. So after all this research, I thought to myself, you know what, that's enough. I'm just gonna rebuild the entire TikTok interface from the ground up, including the front end and the back end. I'm gonna host it myself and let people upload their own videos and implement this auto scroll. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna start on Figma and map out and design what this TikTok interface will actually look like. I'm pretty good with design and I wanted to create something that maybe has a little bit of an improvement over the traditional design. This meant that I had a look at the, both the mobile version as well as the desktop version of TikTok. And I found that the desktop version kind of sucks. It doesn't really look the same as the mobile version and it also doesn't really utilize the space as efficiently as it could. So I redesigned the desktop version to look way better. And here's what I came up with. First, I made sure that the design aesthetic was the same as the mobile version, but in reverse with the menu at the top. Then I tried to give more room for the videos with the content here on the right hand side, such as likes and comments. I even made some room for additional comments so that the top comments can stand out. But also I considered maybe moving around some of these portrait mode designs for the videos into a landscape interface. I think this would look a lot better. I know that a lot of people don't actually take their video content in landscape mode, especially on TikTok, but maybe this website might inspire them to do so. The desktop version of this might actually work quite well, and I'm looking forward to seeing how I develop it. In terms of the development, what I decided was to use React. React is what I'm used to to, especially with the component based structure, it always makes development a breeze. I'm using Create React App to get the whole thing up and running. And one of my favorite libraries in Create React App is actually styled components because of the fact of how easy it is to add in the CSS for all the components and reuse them later down the line. I put together most of the content in small components with a majority of it in my app.js file. Honestly, this file is way too big with hundreds of lines, but that's okay since this is just a basic project and I'm also gonna open source it. So if you guys wanna check it out and demo it, it'll be in the description. You can even contribute to it as well. What I ended up putting together is this design just here. It is a responsive down to the mobile viewport, which means that it works on desktop and tablet and all the devices. And it's really cool because of the way that the internet interface works, I've actually added some CSS positioning, which flips the design, basically allowing the menu to exist at the very top. And then when you go to the mobile viewport, it pops down to the bottom with some fixed positioning. And that was pretty fun to make. I used font awesome for the library because I know that their icons usually basically cover everything. And then after that, I pulled in some SVGs of my own and created out the rest of the design. Now I know that this design has comments and retweets and likes, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to implement all that functionality because it's time for me to try and figure out exactly how I can make this thing auto scroll. I think this will be the hardest part of creating this project. And if I can implement this properly, then it'll make the whole app a reality. It's been a couple of weeks. I've implemented a design, I've got a front end, but this scrolling thing seems like the hardest part ever. It was like I was going in circles and I just didn't know what to do 
next. The worst thing is that feeling when, for example, you just can't figure out a piece of code and you just keep trying and trying and trying until you've pretty much exhausted every possible idea. And this is where I stumbled across the coolest CSS property I've ever seen. It's called scroll snap. Scroll snap is a way for you to be able to scroll to one section or another and for the scrolling position to sort of just snap into that section automatically. This works on desktops, it works on mobile phones, and it even works across all browsers. I'm actually really impressed because this pretty much covers everything I needed to do. So now all I really need is some JavaScript to handle this action at the end of a video. To do this, I'm going to have to go a little bit deep to figure out if other people have maybe done it on Stack Overflow. This is where I needed three things to happen. The very first is for videos to autoplay, which I'm pretty sure the default of HTML element for videos can do already when you pass in the tag autoplay into the syntax. The second part was to have a function kick off when a video has finished playing, which isn't an easy task to do, but I'm sure I can figure that out in React. When that is kicked off, I needed to create a scroll event that isn't done by the user, but is handled through JavaScript to scroll to the next video. And then finally, for that next video to start playing automatically. Now, all of these in combination aren't an easy thing to do. And if I can get all of this right, then we'll have the whole app pretty much ready to go and test out. Now, the way I'm thinking of doing this originally was to jump onto Stack Overflow and see if other people have solved this. When I did so, I found there were lots and lots of different options, but I did come across a library that had someone already solve a number of these issues, which actually had a smart way of implementing this play and stop feature. What they've done here is created a library that when the video is in the frame of the viewport, it'll automatically play. And as soon as it leaves the viewport, it'll automatically stop. And so I implemented this piece of code into my project. And then on top of that, I implemented this auto scrolling feature from CSS and I put it all together. And here is the end result. Here, you can see that it's working in the fact that I have all my videos loaded. The very first one is auto playing and I can scroll manually back and forth. But on top of that, if we just wait for a video to finish, it scrolls straight to the next video which starts playing. So all of this is now done, but it's all just front end code using Create React App. There's no back end server, which means that our videos aren't really populating properly from a database or anything. They're just pretend. So the next step I want to do is load up an instance of Node.js. The reason I'm using Node.js on the back end is because I like JavaScript. I like using it on the front end. I like using it on the back end. I just like using it everywhere, though I do need to learn TypeScript. On top of that, there are two main things that I need this API to do. The very first is the uploading of content, which I'm gonna use Molter to do. I really wanna make sure that the files themselves are just MP4 files, and there's a limit to the size as well. The second part is showcasing what content is in that uploads folder that I create. Now I'm thinking maybe I can have Node.js work with Mongo in the future, maybe showcasing likes and comments, but for the time being, I think just uploading a video file should be enough will allow anyone to upload a video and we'll just have them presented without an algorithm or anything like that. So first come, first serve basis. So I put this all together and connected it to my React frontend. I was thinking of using Axios, but that library might be overkill for this project. So just a basic fetch request pulled in all the URLs with the video URLs as well. And I can just get them to populate in the web app ready to play. Now with all of this working, I also did some testing of uploading videos, making sure that only MP4s are uploaded and that was working too. Of course, I'm running on a local dev server, so it's really hard to guess whether or not this will work online. So it's time to have a look at some server hosting. These days, finding good server hosting isn't an easy thing to do. There are a lot of companies out there that would say they're the best. There's lots of top 10 lists, and sometimes it's best to do your own research to figure out what works. I was nearly at the point of just giving up. Especially after working so long to build a project like this, I just wanted a good hosting company so that I could just put this online for anyone to try out. Sometimes if you get stuck, it's good to take a break or just move to a different location to get some inspiration back into your system. Here, this is where I like to go onto my beanbag and have some thinking time for myself where I get some ideas of what I'm trying to figure out. So I need a hosting provider that basically lets me host a simple Linux server in the cloud. And this is where I came across the company Gcore. I think they seem okay. Let's have a look. Apparently they're 30 to 70% more cost effective than other big cloud providers. So I decided to give them a try. I logged into their system and I also had a little coupon code, which is Adrian007 because they were kind enough to sponsor this video. 
Their interface for the web was quite simple. They had options here for streaming as well as even doing storage content and apparently their response time is like 20 to 30 milliseconds for all regions which is pretty quick. I created a brand new project here for my TikTok and I created an instance. This cloud instance I wanted somewhere close to me so I picked Singapore seeing that that's probably the closest location to Australia. On top of that, I decided to go for a Ubuntu instance of the latest version because I've used that previously to host cloud servers. Finally, I picked a one virtual core CPU with two gigs of RAM. Since I know these guys are partnered with Intel, these CPUs will probably work quite well. And that was it. I deployed one of my fastest cloud servers today. Next, I used my DevOps skills to basically install Node.js, NPM, and all the other goodies that you need to be able to run a cloud server. Finally, I enabled the firewall to enable any traffic to the web so that we could run the web server successfully later on. Then I downloaded Git to the cloud server and I got the actual project up and running by doing an npm install. And there was only one more command to run which was node space index.js and I got it up and running. And now I've got this working all online. You guys can check it out right now in the description below. You can upload videos, you can see how the auto scroll works and you can even clone this project for yourself to test out in your own cloud environment. Now really, I think auto scroll should be a much implemented feature, or at least auto play. For example, YouTube already does auto play the next video in line, and yet things like YouTube Shorts or TikTok Shorts simply don't do this, which doesn't make sense. I hope that they do implement this feature, but if they don't, then maybe I just need to continue building this app. Finally, I'd like to thank Gcore for sponsoring this video. They make videos like this happen, as well as others on this channel and other channels too. You guys can check out more information about them in the description below as well.